B-roll, a very common tool used in various ways that adds something special to your video. Today we're talking about how to use and edit B-roll in your videos. I'm going to be explaining some aspects of it and we'll be using the Shotcut video editor as well. However, it doesn't matter what video editing software you use, it's essentially the same foundation. Except when it comes to the actual editing part, you'll have to modify that according to what software you use. But to get started, well, B-roll, also known as secondary footage, is extra footage that you have or take that's used to enhance the narrative of a topic within your video. So this is usually added on top of your A-roll, which is the main part of your video, such as a talking headshot. So the B-roll is added on top of your main footage and it's used to enhance what you're saying. Essentially, any supporting footage ranging from videos of a certain subject or object depending on the circumstance. You can also use stock photos as well as any title sequences or headers and this is really helpful in demonstrating certain examples and keeping overall engagement in your videos during an explanation. So we're just going to jump right in into Shotcut and as you can see I have my main timeline filled with the A-roll shots or in this case my main video topic. So for my B-roll I am going to be using a mix of both stock footage and photos and all this is going to pertain to what I'm talking about in my main video. And you guys will get to see examples and some creative stuff that we can do with it. So the video topic is about increasing your audio quality. Now since I don't have a camera and don't have a talking headshot my main footage is just going to be a screen recording of me editing some videos and I'm going to be placing at b-roll in parts where I mention gear editing or different kinds of software anything to support what I'm saying so the next thing I'm going to do is just going to go and play the video and just look for key phrases where I talk about either subject where it's a good opportunity to show some b-roll so the first thing that you can do to increase your audio quality is very simple which is finding a quiet space to record so as you can see here, we paused it because I mentioned something about recording in a quiet environment. So I actually have a B-roll clip for this that we can use that goes perfectly into this. And I'm just going to click it and drag it onto the top track. And all I'm going to do is just adjust it and trim the start and end of it of how much I want the duration of the B-roll clip to be. And you guys can modify any footage of any B-roll that you may have that fits with your storyline. So that's what I'm just going to be doing in here. I'm going to be trimming it and I'm also going to be adding some changes in speed just by going to the properties and just increasing the speed. From there, I'm just going to hit enter so the effect can be added. And now the speed is increased and I'm just going to trim it down. And as you can see, it appears whenever I want it and the clip moves on to the next scene. Kind of distracting as your mic picks up the ambient in the room. Now, if it does pick up some background noise, that can be easily removed with the next step, which is editing it. So in this part, I do reference about editing audio. So I actually have a B-roll clip of a microphone beside of a computer ready to be recorded. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to trim it and increase the speed of it. And you guys can do however you feel like doing with your own B-roll clips. Now there's a ton of free audio editing software out there and one of the most common ones is Audacity. The next part, I do mention a software called Audacity. I actually don't have B-roll footage specifically, but I do have a screen recording that we can use as B-roll to show the program layout and how to use it. And I'm just going to put these side by side. And as you can see, I'm just going to adjust it the same way, just trim it and increase the speed of it. Now I did jump around the video and found this part where I do mention about a specific microphone. But the difference with this b-roll is that it's not an actual video, it's an image instead. And since this is a static image showing about the microphone that I'm talking about, we can basically adjust the duration that the image is shown in the video and you guys can do the exact same thing if you don't actually have accessible footage out there and you prefer to use an image, it's basically the same process. So as you can see, we got the main part of the layout done. We've listened to the video clips and we placed B-roll specifically at moments where it helps us emphasize certain points that we make throughout the video. So the next thing that we can do is get into the effects of this and what else we can add to it. So as you can see, each of these individual clips are placed in the appropriate place with no effects, they just appear. And if we hit play, they have no transitions, it's just a hard cut to the next scene. This can be referred as to a standard cut and it's totally fine. I actually really prefer this seamless cut to the next scene because there's no transitions involved. However, we can add transitions to B-roll just in case if you're looking for something extra to add. And we can use this clip of B-roll as an example. So the first thing you want to do if you want to add any transitions onto your b-roll is basically selecting it, going to filters, and we're going to look for this filter called size position and rotate. 
From here, we can go to presets, and as you can see, there's a variety of presets that you guys can use that basically acts as a transition or as a reveal to allow your B-roll to appear in different ways. So if I use slide in from bottom, you can see that is a gradual slide in to the next scene. And you can use that transition in any of your clips, but as I said, you guys can use different transitions. However, in order to modify this according to your preferences, all we have to do is just select on the keyframes icon, and the keyframes timeline should appear, and from here, by selecting one of these toggles, we can actually adjust the duration or speed of the animation. So if you want it longer, we'll just stretch it out longer. If you want it faster or shorter, just pull it in inward. And if you go back to the main timeline, we can hit play, and as you can see, the speed of the slide in effect increases. And you guys can add a variety of effects. You can use a slide in, slide out, either from the right, left, or top and bottom. And you guys can go back and adjust any of these settings as you see fit. Moving on to the next clip, which is the Audacity screen recording. Now for here, we can also leave it at default with no transitions, just a hard cut to the next scene, or we can also add a transition here. So we're just basically doing the same thing. We're selecting the clip, going back to filters, and we're just going to use a slide out transition from the bottom. This will help us revert back to the main clip without a hard cut, just adding a seamless transition. Basically same process. If you want to animate this, just go to the keyframes icon and just adjust the toggles accordingly depending on the speed or duration that you want it to be. And if we go back and if we hit play we can see that the clip slides out smoothly and onto the next scene we can also go as far as adding transitions in between these both clips of b-roll add any transitions you want as a cross effect or dissolved or fade in or fade out effect but for me the hard cut actually works perfectly for this however you guys can modify this depending on your video now the next clip that we're editing is this image. Now adding animation to images can be quite tricky, especially inside of Shotcut, as there's not a lot of effects that you can use with this. It can be done to a certain extent. So we're just going to select the image, go back to filters, and using that same size position and rotate filter, we're going to add a subtle zoom in effect into the clip. We want this zoom effect subtle as much as possible, so we're just going to adjust this as well. Now disclaimer, I do want to say that not all images may work with this effect. You have to find an image that's large enough to be able to play around with it. This image that I'm using is actually not the best reference for it as the image is not large enough to zoom in or zoom out or even use the slide in effect. However, if you do have a large enough image, you can accomplish any of these effects either if it's a zooming in or adding that sliding animation to the left or right throughout the video clip. But these are the settings that you would use for these images as well. So to add the zoom in effect, all we have to do is go back to the settings for the filter and increase the amount of zoom that you want. Now I'm not going to zoom in too much because like I said before, this image is not big enough, but I am going to add a good amount of zoom to it. From here, we're just going to go to the keyframe timeline again, and I'm just going to drag the toggle as far as I can so it can be a slow and subtle zoom effect. And going back to the timeline, we can just preview this real quick. And as you can see, there is a really subtle zoom, but it is noticeable and it adds some kind of dynamic into the image so that it's not just a static image. There's actually some movement going on and it actually achieves a pretty nice effect to it. But like I said before, you can achieve any effect with these images. Just make sure that your image is large enough to cover the whole frame. Adding B-roll to your videos can be a fun and creative process because there's so much you can do with it. Not to mention that can help cover up the occasional mishaps when editing, but hopefully this video was of any help, and if it was, well, let me know. But that's it for today's video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.